It's a pleasure to be here to discuss cluster randomization. I've been tasked with the duty to present what cluster randomization clouds are all about to, this, to those people in the audience uh, who are not familiar with it. And uh, Monica assures me that uh, with the caliber of this group, this can be done in 15 minutes easily. So I have no problem. Cluster randomization trials are simply experiments in which uh, social units or clusters of individuals, rather than independent individuals, are randomly allocated to intervention groups. There's many examples of different randomization units. Medical practices selected as the randomization unit in trials evaluating the efficacy of disease screening programs. Communities selected as the randomization unit in trials evaluating the effectiveness of new vaccine in developing countries. Hospitals uh, selected as the randomization unit in trials evaluating educational guidelines directed at physicians uh, and or administrators. And there's also uh, several um, more unusual randomization units that have been seen in the literature. There have been studies that have randomized uh, uh, churches where the pastor gives advice to us, uh, people to stop smoking. Um, there's been trials that have randomized uh, baseball teams to evaluate the effect of uh, asking people to stop smoking, uh, smokeless tobacco, and many other uh, uh, different types of uh, randomization units. The reasons for adopting this design are always very practical because, as I'll s indicate, it's statistically inefficient compared to individually randomized designs. Um, I became involved in this uh, uh, field many years ago when I became part of a study of uh, hypertension screening and management in uh, family practice. Now, having set up a mechanism for screening for hypertension and then managing hypertensives, it would be highly uh, logistically difficult and administratively inconvenient to randomize some patients to uh, this intervention but not uh, others. Um, it also might be easier to obtain the cooperation of investigators if they're told they don't have to treat some patients differently from others. And uh, some uh, investigators might even have ethical uh, objections uh, to treating uh, patients in the same practice uh, differently. And other reasons are to enhance subject compliance, the idea being here that if um, everyone in the cluster is doing the same thing, having the same treatment administered, uh, that will enhance their uh, compliance. But probably the most common reason that I've seen uh, in the literature is to avoid treatment group contamination. For example, in individually randomized trials of uh, counseling or lifestyle modification, the concern is that control group subjects could uh, mingle with experimental group subjects, uh, compare the interventions, or even share their interventions, thus creating um, uh, a bias that would dilute the effect of the uh, intervention. I think this is the most common reason. And then there are interventions that naturally or must be applied at the cluster level. This includes mass education trials, uh, where uh, messages, for example, to stop smoking on billboards, uh, etc., are put into um, uh, a citywide locale. Uh, water fluoridation trials are another example uh, where it would be difficult to uh, fluoridate some uh, homes in a, in a given uh, district, but not, uh, but not others. A key property from a statistical perspective is that inferences are frequently intended to apply at the individual level while randomization is at the cluster or group level. So the unit of randomization may be different from the unit of analysis. So this differs from how classical statistical analysis uh, uh, developed where the unit of randomization always tended to be the unit of analysis. And the problem is statistically that the lack of independence among individuals in the same cluster, intracluster correlation, creates special methodologic challenges in both design and analysis. In other words, uh, the responses of two people in the same cluster, whether for reasons of self-selection or external factors, will tend to be more similar than responses in, uh, in uh, different clusters. Um, statisticians sometimes refer this as a multi-level uh, design. Multi-level because we have clusters at the first level, individuals at the second level. But this also raises uh, the issue of it being um, a multi-level ethics uh, inquiry as well because we have ethical issues at both the cluster level and at the individual level and this will be the focus of much of the, uh, uh, the talks to uh, come and which makes this field so, uh, so interesting. The implications of, of 
people in the same cluster being more similar than people in different clusters is essentially a reduction in effective sample size that depends on the size of the intracluster correlation coefficient and the average cluster size. The uh, intracluster correlation coefficient is simply the ordinary correlation between any two people's responses in the same cluster. But the effects of ignoring it are insidious. Um, if you um, ignore it in the sample size calculations, you will get an underpowered study. Which, uh, in other words, you'll have an elevated type 2 error. And if you apply standard statistical methods, uh, generally will have um, the risk of spurious statistical significance, an elevated type 1 error. So there's really problems at, in, at both levels. Um, if nothing is going on with respect to the treatment effectiveness, you have an elevated risk of falsely concluding the treatment is effective. That's the type 1 error. But if uh, something is going on, on the other hand, and you ignore that in the sample size calculation, you have an elevated risk of, of uh, falsely concluding there is no treatment effect. And uh, these are on two different tracks. Students sometimes, well, is this cancel? They cancel each other out? No, they don't cancel each other out. These are on two different levels. I'll just uh, finish. I'll give a couple of classic studies that have been done in randomizing clusters. This was a very important study showing the um, effectiveness of vitamin A supplementation in reducing childhood mortality. 450 villages in Indonesia were randomly assigned to either participate in vitamin A supplementation or serve as a control. Uh, One-year mortality rates uh, were compared in the two groups. Because of its statistical inefficiency compared to randomizing individuals, it's always important to justify the reason for adopting this design. In this case, the investigator said simply that it would have been politically impossible to randomize some children in a village to vitamin A, but not um, others. And uh, it turned out that this trial uh, was both statistically and clinically significant and began a long uh, series of future trials looking at the um, effect of, uh, of vitamin A on m maternal mortality when given to neonates, um, and it was adequately designed and uh, analyzed. Another classic example is the COMMIT study. One feature of the vitamin A study is that it has large size. 450 villages in Indonesia were randomized. Well. Uh, this is highly unusual. Most uh, cluster randomization trials are much smaller than this, and this was certainly the case in the COMMIT community intervention trial, which was designed to promote smoking cessation using a variety of uh, community resources. Uh, this involved um, 11 matched pairs of communities. Because of the smaller effective sample size in cluster randomization trials, investigators are often tempted to use pair matching to increase efficiency. In this case, the matching factors were size, population density, and several other demographic variables. But this trial, such uh, like many community intervention trials, was not successful in, in, uh, in showing the primary endpoint to be uh, clinically significant. The reasons for intracluster correlation um, are various. Subjects could select the clusters to which they belong. For example, female f patients may select uh, Female doctors, uh, smokeless uh, patients who don't smoke may select physicians who don't smoke. But it also could be external covariates at the cluster level that affect all individuals in the same manner. Differences in temperature between nurseries may be related to, uh, to infection rates. And then there's internally generated clustering where individuals within clusters simply interact and as a result could respond similarly for that reason alone. Education strategies or therapies provided in a group setting uh, also generate the same type of uh, intracluster correlation. And then there's finally the tendency of infectious diseases to spread more naturally within than among families or hospitals. But whatever the reason for the clustering or the intracluster correlation, uh, which is very difficult to uh, uh, discern uh, unless you have a lot of data, uh, it has to be accounted for in both the design and uh, analysis. One of the uh, major issues that have plagued cluster randomization trials, particularly community intervention trials, has been low power. And there's been much hand-wringing in the literature ab about this with several editorials like the one by Susser in 1995. Generally, the size of effects has been meager in relation to the effort expended because these trials at the community level are very, very expensive. And he went on to say, we often do not have the resources to detect even medium-sized um, effects. Why is this so? Well, there's several reasons. First of all, 
Interventions are often applied on a group basis, and there's little or no attention given to individual study participants They're where there is in a, in, a, in a standard clinical trial. Some studies permit the immigration of new subjects after baseline, and uh, there could be out-migration problems as well. Unlike in standard clinical trials, entire clusters rather than uh, individuals may be lost to follow-up, and this, of course, is devastating to the trial power. Experimental contamination can still be um, a, a, an issue when clusters uh, neighboring each other allow uh, residents to travel from one cluster to the other. Over-optimistic expectations regarding effect size is a problem that plagues all clinical trials, as well as uh, the cluster trials. And many uh, cluster trials are prevention trials, and prevention trials have their own problems with power. You're dealing with a heterogeneous subject population, um, low event rates, compliance problems, uh, long uh, follow-up. So there are many uh, uh, difficulties in that respect. And I'll just finish by mentioning that uh, Marion Campbell and her colleagues in the British Medical Journal in 2004 developed uh, an extension of what was called this consort statement for reporting of cluster randomization trials. And it included a checklist of items that should be included in a trial report. It extended the uh, original consort statement for reporting individually randomized trials. And the key points were some of the ones I've mentioned the rationale for adopting cluster randomization must be given, given a statistical inefficiency, lower, um, smaller effect size or sample size, incorporation of clustering into the sample size estimation and analysis, and a chart showing how uh, the flow of clusters is uh, through the trial from all the way from assignment to, uh, to analysis.